Hey everyone, this is Ryan with Vapor Hunting Technologies. Just want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone that liked the last video because I was actually able to get a haircut. Um... We're actually hopping right back into the Honda 250 project here. I've got one of the engine cases here that's got some seriously old paint, some pretty nasty rusting as you guys can see, and some, some serious corrosion going on in here. So we're gonna clean up both sides of this. I'm actually gonna run a little bit of an experiment here. As you guys can see, there are some bearings that are exposed. And as you know, with wet blasting, you do have an abrasive. And so what we're gonna try and do is not only clean this up, polish it up, but then we're gonna try and use the hydroblast to remove that abrasive that's trapped in those bearings and see if we can get them spinning freely again. So this should be a really cool video because it's gonna show uh, removal of paint, polishing, and cleaning after wet blasting all in one video. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with this engine casing here is actually put it in our VH800 base because we have 220 aluminum oxide in here, which is a super angular abrasive. It's not as angular as the 120 that we typically use, but this is what we have in the showroom and it's gonna do an excellent job. If you guys saw in the last video, I was actually able to remove this paint with glass bead. That's not typical, but I guess just because this paint's been on here for so long, it's kind of getting to the point where it's ready to fall off. Um, so this 220 is going to make quick work of any paint, rust, grime that's on this engine case. So let's go ahead and get to it. So we're actually starting at around 110, which will probably drop to around 100 working PSI. Um, it's usually a good idea to blast at higher pressure when you're trying to remove paint. Although your abrasive choice is more important than the pressure that you're blasting with. Say if you were doing something like a silicon carbide, it's gonna rip no matter what pressure. And something like a, a glass bead, we really shouldn't be using to try and, and strip coatings or paint. Sometimes these things get hard to see in, but usually if you let the, the vapor dissipate, it gets a whole lot better. So I did miss a few spots. I think that's just abrasive, but a uh, few places here and there. I'm gonna finish this up probably in total. I've been working on this for about eight minutes. This gasket's actually coming off fairly well. These bearings are definitely getting some abrasive in them. So again, we'll see if we can clean those out. And before anybody, Hey, tell it in the comments. These bearings will most likely be replaced. I mean, unless they turn out perfectly fine. Uh, we always recommend removing these bearings or replacing them afterwards, just because abrasive is very good at finding its way into areas that you don't want it. And a bearing is definitely not a place that you want abrasive. So yeah, I'll finish this thing up and then we'll be ready to polish it. Okay. Now this part is by no means perfect, but you can definitely tell the difference between where it is now and uh, where we started at. Uh, we are back to the bare metal. In most places, there are a few things that I need to clean up, but what I'm actually gonna show you guys how to use is a dip tank to try and get some of this abrasive that's left on here off. And to put it simply, all a dip tank is, is just a bucket of water, like this one here, that you guys are gonna take your part, place it in, and just kind of allow that abrasive to float up in the air. You can actually see it running off there. If you're trying to use the internal rinse inside your cabinet, that's a great way of knocking off that abrasive that's just stuck on the part off before pulling it out. But you really need to put it in a fresh water source or some kind of uh, parts washer afterwards. We use ultrasonic tanks as well as vibratory tanks to try and get abrasive out of parts. But a dip tank is just a super simple, easy way to do this at home. Plus, this is just about as inexpensive as it gets. It's really good if you guys have parts with convex cavities because that water will go in and get the abrasive out. So one other thing I wanna show on this part really quickly. So that might look like abrasive, but what that actually is is pitting. So if you remember earlier, whenever this thing was sitting on the table, this section here had a lot of rust and corrosion. And so it's actually started to eat away at this aluminum. And I'm hoping that when we put this in the glass bead machine, we might be able to smooth it a little bit, but usually pitting when it's this severe is left on the part. And see, there are a few areas that I missed so we'll be able to see how well the 1000 HD with the glass bead does. So you guys can see all that pitting that's in there. Again, that is an abrasive. It's just pitting on the part. So we did do this one in a 220 aluminum oxide. And if you guys were trying to coat this part afterwards with something like a Cerakote, 
I would recommend using something like this 90 aluminum oxide. I believe the Cerakote calls for an 80 grit dry aluminum oxide, but a, like a 70 or 90 grit aluminum oxide in a wet cabinet is gonna get you the same results. Before we continue on this part, I actually wanna talk about the significance of this machine. I'm sure you guys have seen it in a multitude of our videos. It's been in the showroom since technically 2016. This is actually the first plastic wet blasting cabinet that we had here. And much like the 700, this machine was actually created to fill the needs of people who were looking for a more economical model of a vapor blasting machine. That's actually why John started creating these machines is because when he was looking at purchasing one, something this size was gonna be $20,000. And I think when we released it, it was what, around eight, I believe. And now it's actually down from that. Uh, just because we're trying to reach those economies of scale and get stuff down by buying in bulk so that we can give you guys a lower cost. But that's again, that's why this machine was actually created. And that's something that we've always tried to do here at Vapor Home Technologies is, you, is give you guys a very capable machine at the lowest price we possibly can. Um, we, we do not cut quarters when it comes to capabilities. I mean, these things are fully fledged white blasting cabinets. This one, like I said, has been in service since 2016. And again, we stand behind our products with our lifetime warranty. So if you guys buy one of these machines, we are here, you can call us anytime. We will get you the parts that you need to stay up and running. Again, we do like to provide you guys with as much capability as possible at the lowest price. And it's why I believe we are the leading manufacturer in the United States is because we stand by those values. Let's get back to this part. So to finish this the rest of the way up, I'm gonna be using our VH1000HD. Now this machine has 170 to 325 glass bead in it. That's a very good mixture if you're trying to polish stuff up. It's actually something we have on our website if you guys are looking for that abrasive. Now this machine here is truly an industrial offering that we have. It has our custom built in-house pump and it actually does a very good job of making sure that you get an accurate amount of slurry pumped to the blast gun. Um, the rest of these machines use more of a standard style, which works perfect. You're gonna get the same results. This one here just does a little bit better job at actually agitating the, the slurry in the bottom. This machine was created in response to companies who wanted to guarantee they weren't gonna have any downtime. For that reason, it's incredibly overbuilt for the average consumer or average business. Um, the 1000 has actually been in our lineup since the beginning and we have ones that ha are operating and have never had any issues, but this was our guarantee. So if you guys are a business who are looking to make sure that your machine is going to be constantly up and running, this is your answer. You're not gonna have any issues. And actually the way the pump's set up, we try and make sure it doesn't suck up as much stuff, because that's usually what causes other pumps to fail is uh, someone drops something in the hopper and it gets, it gets sucked up. But uh, this machine here is actually very good as far as longevity goes and also it gives really good results just like every other machine we have this thing's pretty wild if you guys want to see how vapor blasting looks on your parts we actually have free application testing um, we will sign ndas if you guys are a large company that's concerned about that stuff or if you're just someone looking to do wet blasting in your garage at home, fill out our form. We'll actually put a link below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you'd like us to film it, we will. Um, we might even put it on YouTube. If there, again, if there's not an NDA, but if you're a company looking to see how wet blasting performs, send that stuff in. We'll blast it for free. Show you guys how it looks with different abrasives, different finishes, try and get it tailored to how you want it just so you can be certain that wet blasting is actually going to perform how you want it to on your parts. So again, if this is something that you've considered, that being wet blasting, definitely send your parts in, see how they look once they're cleaned up and see how you can use it on your parts. That's one thing I should mention. I'm kind of glad that fell off. We actually use just normal everyday painter's tape to cover up areas like this, uh, this data plate here, just so that it doesn't damage it because those thin metals can be damaged by wet blasting. That one's actually been through this machine, the duct tank and the HD, and it was still holding on. So painter's tape is actually a very good way of protecting those areas that you don't want to just hit with the full force of wet blasting. So I'm kind of glad that I saw that. I hope this shows up as well on camera as it does in person. That looks phenomenal. So just want to point out that pitting is actually still present and you can see it in a few places. Um, 
but just through vapor honing, it does look a lot better because it was able to remove a lot of that gunk and grime that was actually in those pits. Um, should help preserve this part, and it really does look a lot cleaner in there. The, just, the pitting doesn't look near as bad, but this, this outer part turned out awesome. It is so smooth to the touch, just from where that aluminum has been rolled. I mean, this thing, it, that's a true vapor finish right there. I love it, dude. I wanna, I wanna put it together with this guy and actually show you guys. This thing looks in, the com in comparison to how it was before. I just kinda set them there. I mean, look at that. I hope I didn't get it dirty. That is incredible. It's actually wild how much cleaner this side is. I didn't actually look at this one before as far as how much gunk is actually on the inside, but just looking at the paint and how clean this turned out. How long would you say this took us in total, John? What would you, what would you give it an estimate of? Probably 30 minutes yeah, total blasting. So that includes using both abrasives and cleaning the parts afterwards. You guys can create results just like this in your shop in about 30 minutes. And again, that's one thing um, that we try and do, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, is packing our machines full with as much capability and potential as possible. You're gonna be able to create these results regardless of the machine that you purchase. So if you have a micro, these results are achievable. If you have a 700, achievable. If you go top of the line and get a 1000 HD, these results are achievable. Um, you're not limited as to your potential by the amount that you spend. And again, even if you do decide to start with a micro and you realize that it's not large enough to do your parts, use the trade up option. Again, you get all the money that you pay for that micro back to put towards something like an 800. That way you're not stuck with something small and it doesn't work out for you. You can always upgrade and get something larger. And again, no matter which machine you have, these results are going to be achievable. I mean, this looks phenomenal, dude. That's what we should say about the 700. We should say it's packed full of capability because that's literally what it is. I mean, you, you can do that, no problem, in a 700. And, you know whenever you start blasting and you accidentally knock the part halfway across the country inside of one of these machines, and like, especially if you're in the, the HD, you have to go and pull it back if it's a smaller part. Yeah. Don't have that issue in a 700. Thing is so, like, perfectly sized that m most of your parts will fit, what would you say? probably 80% of the parts yeah. you want to blast will fit. Yeah. And actually, it's probably more, because I think we say 80 for the micro. But dude, I love that little thing. I, I, I really do. And I'm a FL kind of guy. That's what I actually have in my house. But uh, yeah, the 700 is kind of yep. kind of taking that top place. Staying, staying the top. Just because for, for how much you spend and what you get and the ability to place it anywhere you want to, can't beat it, bro. I like it. So if you guys like this video, please give us a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. I mean, we post a ton of educational videos, before and after videos, stuff that you guys will want to see on our YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed. Also check out our other socials because we post stuff all the time on there, including sales updates. If you guys are considering getting one of these, you can always be up to date on the sales using our uh, social medias. Make sure you guys go check out the other videos that we've done with this 250 project just so you can understand how easy it is to replicate these results in your shop. And again, if you guys are ready to get the best wet blasting equipment on the market today in your shop, home, industry, whatever it is, business, left out business, make sure you guys call us at 828-202-5563. We'll be happy to help you determine what abrasive, what machine, what pressures, everything that you need to be doing and knowing when you're starting to wet blast to create the optimal results for your parts we can help you guys determine that and get you set up with a machine. So again, that number is 828-202-5563. Please give this video a like and leave your questions and comments below. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day. Peace.